Let's get ready to story! Here we are. The opening after our intermission is going to go to... Here we go. All right, the next reader, three words for this person are courses, Pittsburgh, and professor. It is Laurie McMillan, everybody. Laurie McMillan. Come on up here. This is perfect, it's perfect. First, I just wanted to say, <laughs> get off the stage. Now, first, Joe, Joe. I wanted to say thank you to Pam and to everyone who helped organize tonight. It's fantastic. Is everyone having a good time? Great story so far. So I have to tell you, I was preparing for tonight and thinking, all right, what should I talk about? What should I talk about? I've had a lot of turning points in my life. And finally, I started thinking, you know, there's that one thing that I never expected would happen to me. Sure, I saw it happen to other people, but I never even batted an eye, never imagined myself being in that situation. That's right. I'm gonna tell you about the time my husband and I became owners of a minivan. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking, I do. You're looking at me and saying, hey, you look kinda middle class, you definitely look middle aged. Your bio does say you're a mom, and I am a mom. You're thinking, of course you own a minivan. But really, I never saw myself that way. I've pretty much always thought I've been in about, I don't know, maybe third grade, just starting to figure things out. On a really good day, I feel as mature as maybe a 16 or 17 year old. <laughs> My very first car was a Toyota Paseo, bright turquoise, two-door car, kind of fun, kind of sporty, but not too outrageous. It was me. And then I became a mom, and I had one of those infant carriers, and I'd have to kind of maneuver it in and maneuver it out, and the baby's head would be going like this. <laughs> it was not really ideal. So somehow I ended up at the car dealership, and I blocked this actual scene out of my head because it was a little painful. But then one day, there I was, behind the wheel of a forest green 97 Dodge Caravan. And it was like that Talking head song. I was thinking, where does this highway go to? And how did I get here? Now, I did transition eventually, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about perhaps the more surprising part. My husband ended up driving this very same van a couple years later. We did some car switcheroo. And he did not go through the same identity crisis I did. Now let me be clear, my husband is a man, not a mom. He's also a state trooper. Now I don't know if you're at all familiar with state trooper culture at all, but a lot of troopers are men. And some of them, one or two maybe, are a little bit, I don't know, like macho I guess I would say. <laughs> Yeah, just for one example, there was one guy when they were doing a Dunkin' Donuts run, he ordered some kind of chai latte concoction. He did that once. <laughs> they still refer to it as the chai latte incident. And he's only had black coffee since then. No <laughs> sugar. Yeah. So you can imagine the troopers are salivating when my husband's driving into the police barracks in this Forest Green 97 Dodge Caravan. They're like, yeah, we should be getting hands on him. Um, but my husband, well, he's a bit like the John Travolta character in the movie Get Shorty. Has anybody seen Get Shorty? <laughs> uh, I'll recap for you. So John Travolta plays this hoodlum who is very cool, but he goes to Hollywood and the only rental available is a minivan, so everybody is surprised because he's so cool. They're like, what are you doing with a minivan? And John Travolta's character kind of goes, the Cadillac and minivans. <laughs> so by the end of the movie, everyone in Hollywood is now cruising around in a minivan. <laughs> so this is my husband. The guys start hassling him at work about the minivan, and my husband just kind of says, you know, I love the minivan. It's got all that space. I can find all my shit whenever I want it. 
you know I was in the military, you know I like organization, <laughs> and you know, we take long trips with the kids, it's like they're not even in the same country. <laughs> Swear to God that in six months, two other troopers were driving in advance to work. <laughs> two more were looking into buying them for their families. They were all new minivans, not used like ours, but still, they were minivans. My transition was not quite like my husband's. I was like, okay, I'm a minivan mom. So I am now, I'm a minivan mom. And then something happened that made me realize, sure, I might be part minivan mom, but that's not all there was to me. It happened because my friend Jess was getting married. A bunch of us decided we'd organize a big bachelorette party. Suddenly it hit me, inspiration. I'll drive the party van. <laughs> so we take those car seats out, we start decorating, we have signs in the window so everybody's gonna beep at us. And we put up streamers decorated with glow-in-the-dark condoms. We're batting around inflatable penises. It's the party van. And it's even better because I'm not the bachelorette so I don't have to do the stupid things like have men drink from my shoe and that sort of thing. Um, so we go out for the night in the tower and have a great time. I'm like, yeah. I'm like Hannah Montana. I'm the minivan mom, I drive the party van. It's the best of both worlds. So yeah, my husband and I, we both did adjust to driving the minivan. We found, yeah, the minivan, it can shape us, it can define us but we also have the power to redefine the minivan. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.